Welcome to another episode of Theatre Corner. I'm your host, Michael Taylor. Theatre Corner is an interview series created as an ongoing effort to promote more diverse interests and involvement in the theatre scene. This program is made possible through a partnership with the Old Globe Theatre in San Diego, California. Silence your cell phones, folks. You're about to enter Theatre Corner. Marcel Spears is an up-and-coming actor, singer, and writer. Originally from New Orleans, Marcel studied the theatrical arts at Prairie View A&M University before earning an MFA in acting from Columbia University in the city of New York in 2015. He's performed extensively in the Houston and New York theater circuits and recently made his Old Globe debut as part of the starry and notable diverse cast of the hit intellectual comedy penned by Steve Martin, Picasso at the La Pan Agile. As a fellow Columbia University alumnus, I am specially pleased to welcome Marcel to Theater Corner to learn more about his craft and his vision for what is sure to be a bright and celebrated career. Marcel, Welcome here. Very welcome What's to the area on, Theater man. Corner. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for I, having me. I know you're, 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 you're really busy and, uh, and I appreciate you taking a bit of time out to, to, to visit a brother no, here in Theater no, Corner. No, no worries, man. No worries. <laughs> Very good. And I want to get two uh, quick fun facts out of the way. Uh, number one, uh, both uh, Marcel and myself, we're, we're both uh, Columbia alumnus. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm sitting here wondering, I'm looking at this athletic young man, I'm, ah. and I'm wondering why he didn't volunteer himself to help out that losing football ah. team. That we <laughs> what do you Go mean? Lions! Go Lions! Why didn't you just, <laughs> just jump out of the stands and just run out there and, uh, I don't know, grab uh -huh. the football and run one for them. But bless their heart. Bless their heart. The, the highest GPA of any football team in the country, but uh, they couldn't Columbia pull Columbia University Lions. That, that, that's, that's, all right. Right. that's all right. You, you do it for the love. You, you go do to it for, for the love. There you go, yeah, man. That's, that's what it that's is. the way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and fun fact, too. So as, as I mentioned, you, you, you performed here in the, in the Old Globe mm -hmm. and Steve Martin's play, uh, Picasso at the La Pan Agile. And, and that involves uh, uh, Einstein and Picasso coming together in a bar. Yes, sir. Um, and so that's uh, a scientist and an, and an artist coming together and, and, and a conversation ensues. But uh, we have the same thing here. Uh, you're an artist, obviously, and, and, and by trade, I'm, I'm an archaeologist. And so we, we got science and, and art coming together, mm -hmm. and we're getting some of that same flavor right here. And uh, we see if we could pull something off <laughs> Steve Martin style. Something, <laughs> something amazing <laughs> might occur. <laughs> something amazing might occur. You got an amazing career uh, launching here. Thank you, man. Uh, and, and let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about where it started. Um, uh, you, you went to a prestigious school, Columbia University. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the challenging and, and rewarding aspects of, of studying there at, at the MFA program at Columbia? Um, I f well, I feel like if, if we're going to go from, from the start, the time where I started taking it serious, I actually have to go back to undergrad before my conservatory training at Columbia mm. um, at Prairie View A&M University, which is a small HBCU near Houston, Texas. And that's where it's like a really scrappy theater program and like everybody had to do everything. It was all hands on mm. deck, no matter what your concentration was, if you want to be a director, if you want to be a writer, like whatever it was, everybody did everything. It was highly competitive, but it was still like a, a very uh, family oriented ensemble type environment where everybody sort of lifted each other up in that way. Right. Um, and that taught me, I think, uh, it, 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 it taught me to sort of trust myself and trust my instincts and trust my, my own voice and realize right. that the stories that I'm interested in telling are legitimate and the stories that I want to tell have value and merit and, and those people, those students, those professors, one in particular, uh, Dr. Crystal Truscott, who was, she was, she's a mentor of mine. She encouraged me to go to grad school. She was like, nah, you, you need, like, to get more training. Like, she was, she was definitely uh, 
someone who advocated for that. And so that, that sort of driving force pushed me into Columbia's conservatory style program where it was highly focused on like Shakespeare and classical yeah. works, which for me, I felt it was, it was a bit alien because as a young black actor, like I, I always felt like Shakespeare was not for me. I always felt like I couldn't, really? I couldn't find my place in the work and like, even going back in, into into high school and like you you would you would see it and you would just feel like it, you weren't represented like you can't be the prince of Denmark because you black like, oh, and it was man. one of those things to where you you felt sort of discouraged just by by nature of what the writing said it was and it wasn't until I got to Prairie View when I got to PV I had teachers who told me no 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 like you you can have agency in these stories and then I got to Columbia and I had teachers who who stretched me past what I thought I could do and pulled me out of my own biases and my own like insecurities to, to like let me realize that that work, that rich work and, and that those words were things that I could access and those, those human experiences were things that I, I like intrinsically understood and these were things that I knew on like a, a, a chemical level, like something mm. that like, it's something that like what the the writings of Shakespeare is something like August Wilson or Tennessee Williams there's something that he puts it on paper and you automatically identify with those characters even if you've never been in those situations like I ain't never been to Cyprus I've never right. been to Spain but like hearing these people go through these human emotions and like grapple with all of these situations was something that I understood and so that is the place where I found out that I could like sort of take up space in that world and it, being in a conservatory, it it messes with you a lot. But I, I told my, it was so funny. I told myself, I told myself when I got accepted into Columbia because I applied for a bunch of schools on okay. the East Coast because I knew I wanted to be in the New York area right. so that I had access to television, film, and theater. And I felt like like the more options I had for work, like the the better chance that I would not be like struggling to find work because I was taught that there's no such thing as a starving artist. Like you gotta hustle. Like you don't have to be a starving artist. There are artists who like struggle and mm -hmm. there's there's like work comes and goes. It's feast or famine in, in the arts, but you don't have to be a starving artist. Like if you're smart about what you do. And so I was like, go to New York. Like that's what I'm gonna do. And so when I got accepted into Columbia, the first thing I told like my friends and my family, I was just like, yo, these white people don't know what they did. They don't know what they did. They about to give this black boy this Ivy League education. There I'm about to go. take it and go. Like, and and run with it. Yeah, I, I posted with that kind of like zeal and that kind of vigor. And um, I think I got a lot more than what I bargained for. Like that, that mindset, that like New Orleans hustle in me like uh, helped me a lot in that, in that program. But Shakespeare, I mean, it's it's an amazing foundation to, to go from. I, yeah. I understand you could, once you get that foundation, you can do anything. You can do any, pretty much anything. Anything. You yeah. can do pretty much, it's like, Shakespeare's like The Simpsons. Like, The Simpsons covered, like, everything. <laughs> so any sitcom or cartoon that comes right. out after that is, is just like, there's a Simpsons episode that touches on that topic or makes that comment or makes that joke. Shakespeare's like that. He wrote it all. And you're using it uh, just for that reason. I mean, you've gone to, you've, you've, you've co-starred and uh, August Wilson's uh, 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 Black, Bo Black Bottom. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as well as Troubled Mind at the, at the Guthrie. Yeah, Troubled uh, Mind. Um, but um, the Shakespeare that you have done, uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream, mm -hmm. Othello, <laughs> yeah. uh, Romeo and Juliet, but A, Mid um, a Midsummer Night's Dream, you, you portrayed Nick Bottom. Nicholas Bottom. But you, were, you won a 2015 Rosemary... Tischler. Tischler fun grant. Yeah. So you impress, you impress some people with that Shakespearean role. Uh, yeah, CSE is, CSE is family. Like they, they are, their partnership with Columbia University is, has been incredibly valuable to mm. my career and my education and my training. Like through CSE, I, I got the training that I needed to become like a teaching artist, which allowed me to like supplement my income in New York and go mm. to different schools and like mentor kids and, and teach kids like at, in all of these schools, like from Queens to the Bronx, like everywhere. Um, and so being in that production at CSC and getting that, having them acknowledge my work in that way, it meant a lot. Right. I mean, it's, it's not one of those things where like, you don't, you don't get into it like looking for, for hands out. But, but when someone sees a young art, like that whole grant is for like 
young actors or mm. actors who are like just getting started and it's just like a nice here you go brother like to, just, to, <laughs> just to keep going and I, and I feel like uh, being in that group of Tischler Fund grant winners it, it it really does it means a lot and it helped a lot yeah uh, I, mean, I mean it certainly wasn't the uh, there's less of them giving it to you and a little bit more of you earning it, I would, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't get it twisted. I worked hard. For, and, but that production was a lot of fun, too. Like, it was, it was the production in my third year at Columbia. Um, and I got to play a character that I didn't, I didn't think that I had a natural affinity for. But mm. the director, uh, Tyne Raffaele, she saw that I had a certain energy that she was looking for in that character. And I, I loved it. It was so much fun. I got to be with my classmates and, like, do something that... Uh, I really, really felt like, I don't know, like made an impact. Like, Phenomenal. I, I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> Phenomenal. Yeah, it was dope. And, 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 and on the topic of Shakespeare, is there something about Shakespeare's work that, uh, that you think is enduring for actors as well as audience uh, members? Um, I, f I feel like at, at his core, Shakespeare was just, or like whatever, whatever your... Uh, your your biases may be about who Shakespeare was mm. or like whether he wrote everything. Right, right. Those those plays speak directly to like the the heart of of humanity and like it speaks directly to like the human experience. Mm, right. Um in a really, really beautiful way. Like he he was a he was a poet and those those plays captured poetry, it captured life in a way that that made us glorious and also tragic <laughs> but it, and, it, and it's amazing and because he was able to do that you get artists like Lorraine, Han Lorraine Hansberry or like August Wilson mm, and like yeah. these these people who are able to like tell human stories in a very specific way through the lens of blackness or whatever it whatever it may be but like that captures human experience in a way that breaks your heart or, or like makes you laugh mm. So you, you have about uh, four more days here at the Globe. Uh, performing oh, man, Steve it's Martin. so sad. Nah. <laughs> it's so sad. Don't talk about it. It's so sad. Four more days left. Miss uh, these guys. What, what did you gain from this experience? Because you, you're, you're on the stage with, I guess, some heavy hitters. I mean, you were on stage with uh, Hal Linden. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Barney Miller, for goodness yeah. sake. Uh, and, and Donald Faison. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Luna Valles. I mean, what was that, what was that experience like? Man, every every job I I get and every job I'm blessed to like be a part of, I I I always try to learn everything I can from it. Like I try to to figure out how much I like. I try to just be a sponge in the room and just soak up as much knowledge and experience from from these actors as I can. And so once I booked this job and I found out like who was in the cast, I I was a little nervous. Not not so much because. Of, of their celebrity, but because of like, I didn't want to make a fool of myself. Right. And, and you know, I, I, I was just, I, I was coming to grips with the fact that I had every right to be there. And like, I just, I, I was just nervous because I, you grow up seeing these people. Right, right. You grow up watching these people. Like, I saw, I, the first time I saw Luna was New York Undercover. Okay, because yeah. I, I, being a little boy from New Orleans, like, I thought that's what New York was. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, that's what it is. And like, so seeing these people in real life and like getting to know them and, and being a part of a Steve Martin play, and, and this being someone that seemed for so long to be like up there, yes. um, it, it was, it was, I was like humbled, but also like a little, a little apprehensive about it. <laughs> then I get in the room and our director Barry has just, he's, he's brought together this ensemble of people that supports each other, that, that are just warm, good, genuine people and fostered the kind of environment that allowed us to just go crazy in this play <laughs> in the best way. Right, right. Um, and so I, I feel like I've, I've learned so much from, from Hal and Ronnie and Donald and Justin and like Luna and Lisa and Kevin. And even like small things, not even always actor things, but like life things. Like I, I'm, I learn from Hal like what it means to be a patriarch of a family. Like we got mm. to meet his whole family. Oh, really? And how he really grounds that entire family. Like how he he seems to be like the pillar of that family. Kevin is a new dad, and I'm like watching him like be a father. He's younger than me. He's 26, <laughs> and he's like he's taking care of this adorable, very very intelligent wow. and rambunctious little girl. And I'm I'm seeing all these things. And I'm just, I'm learning life in, right. in theater. Like, I'm learning what it means to be a person. 
and telling jokes on stage. <laughs> well, I, I enjoyed the performance, and and uh, and I noticed. Uh, I mean, you have every right to be on that stage with with those Thank folks. You. I, I, Thank I, you. I, I must say, and and the and the character you played, Charles. Dabber now, <laughs> Schmenderman. Schmenderman. <laughs> yeah. Schmenderman, you pulled this off. And so your, your role involves a great bit of uh, athleticism, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you keep going day, night after night <laughs> with that particular role. What's, what's, what's that like? Uh, I mean, that's a lot you have to put into it. Yours mm-hmm. is intense. Yeah. And funny. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's so funny. Like, every role is, is tailored to fit the actor who, like, who fills it. And so I had no clue when I signed on to do this that Barry was gonna have me jumping over banisters <laughs> and like sliding on chairs. Right, right, like all, right. all of these very, very athletic things. Uh, shout out to that conservatory training that allowed me to, to allow my instrument to be like supple enough and flexible enough right. to do all of that stuff. But I was, I was surprised because I'm a big boy. Like I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't ready to be hopping over nobody I banisters. Hear, yeah, I thought yeah. I left that life behind me in New right. Orleans. Like I wasn't trying to do that, but it was, it was one of those things to where, like, Barry created a, the kind of room that anything was possible. Mm. He, he didn't, like, he, he never really said, like, a hard no. He would let you try it. Mm. And then he would let the joke die and be like, well, that didn't work. So, <laughs> but it was one of those situations to where one day we were trying to, we were trying to figure out, like, how, how to make Schmendemann's instrument entrance more dynamic. Like, how to really just just like bring him in with yes. a lot of gusto. And um, he was like, why don't, you, why don't you just jump over the banister? <laughs> and my first instinct was like, how? Like, right, what are you right. talking about? <laughs> I don't, that's impossible. Like, I can't do that. Like, you're going, I'm going to die. I'm going to die, Barry. <laughs> but we, we worked it out. And like, between, between his direction and like, the wonderful like set designer and, and like stage hands, they like build like this little platform that I could spring right off of and hop right. over the band. Oh, so, that, yeah. I'm giving away little secrets. There. It's, it's, <laughs> what, it, all it is is like a little step because that's like, that's like a four oh, foot yes. high. Oh, yes. Yeah, certainly. So it like they, they just put like a little step halfway through so I can like run up, get, get over the, get over the band <laughs> and come in for, for Schmenderman. Oh, man. I'd be that's, tired that's, though. That's cool. Like, I'd be tired <laughs> after the show. I'm like pouring, I'm pouring in sweat, man. It's no joke. Schmenderman almost stole the show. I mean, he came, he was a significant character. I I think Schmenderman is the, the most dynamic character in the play. I think Schmenderman deserves record. his own, his own play. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. And so that, that particular play, the, 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 the way Barry Elstein uh, casts this, this play, you can't get more diverse than, yeah. the, than, than the uh, actors that were on that stage. And, and, and uh, the diversity and inclusion in, in the theater world is... Is an important topic these days. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Uh, um, I, I, I love it and I want it to keep going. Like I have a really, I have a love-hate relationship with um, the sort of terms that form around diversity and inclusion mm. in the theater. So like this colorblind casting thing really rubs me the wrong way because it, it, it makes it seem as though it doesn't matter like the qualities of this human being that makes them unique. And like the, the things that really make diversity diversity is not like bringing everybody together and ignoring all of the things that make them different. It's bringing everybody together and celebrating those things. There and so go. I prefer like colorful casting or, or color <laughs> conscious casting. Colorful. But I think, I think diversity and inclusion in theater is, it's first of all necessary. I wouldn't have a job with, without it, but I think, it's, I think it's one of those things to where the mo- if theater works, right? If theater is meant to like, be a, a, a social commentary on life, it's supposed to reflect True. life and the lives that we live, I think it's important for people to get as many different perspectives of life as possible. And that can only happen when you have diversity. True. It can only happen when you, have, when you include those those people on the outskirts or, or the, the the subcultures in this country that usually get like silenced like you got to give those things voice right. so that it can be it can be liberated in a way that people understand it from a safe distance at first but like in seeing that in being confronted with someone that maybe you've never seen before or a topic that you've never discussed or never felt brave enough to um, like figure out what was going on like having that having the opportunity to sit and like have these ideas wash over you have these people like cry and yell and laugh in front of mm. you like it, it it appeals to 
the human in you and like that I think is is what I think that it, that will heal like some of the things that ail this country that will heal some of the things that ail the world and those those kind of experiences like being in this room for an hour and a half however long you're supposed to be here and and sharing that moment with, right. with the people I think that that's that can only be enhanced by having like a more diverse, more inclusive representation of what human what human beings are on stage. All right. How much do you think that influences a, a potential theater goer's decision to to go see this play or not go see? I mean, this yeah. is let's say for black theater goers, for example. Uh, I mean, this is not an August Wilson play, but there's right. there's a good bit of diversity on stage. You think that's uh, that's enough to? to bring uh, black theater goers out there? I think or it's a start. It's a start. I think it's a start. I think like the American Regional Theater has done a great job at like start, like pushing the boundaries and, and trying their best to include people. And I think they just, it just needs to keep going. And right. we have that, right, with Barry Edelson and, and John Diaz at Two River Theater and Joe Hodge at the Guthrie. Like you have these people who are conscious about telling stories that appeal to a wider audience, right? right? right. But like you, ha I feel like you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent when you are trying to reach these sort of, or niche or like sort of outskirted groups of people. So like doing one black show a season for a, a repertoire, it's not enough. <laughs> because yes, right, you'll, right. Get, you'll get droves yeah. of people certainly. coming in. People come in after church and they, they want to see, certainly. because they want to see themselves reflected right, right. on stage. But at the same time, if that's, that, if that's all you got, then they're going to come and they're going to go. Right, right. But in order to like keep those people coming to the theater, I feel like a certain amount of, of consistency is required and diversity helps. Because for me, like see, as, a, as a kid, seeing myself reflected on stage, meant so much to me like right. i thought i could be like Will there you Smith. go exactly. you know and so yeah. like seeing that and and me having that feeling and my mother or my father thinking that it was important for me to see that would encourage them to spend that dollar that was hard to spend anyway <laughs> like it's really hard to come out of pocket for that right. and so them seeing how much it meant or or feeling like it was important for for me to see these things would encourage them or anyone to like it to to put their money forward for that um, so yeah, I, I, I definitely think diversity, um, is incredibly integral right. to any theater company. Like they, they, you, ha you can't do it no more. It's 2017. <laughs> you can't do it without it. Right. You got to get better. And there's some, I guess there's some perceptions, I guess we have to, to, to eliminate as well. Yeah. You know, that uh, a theater, uh, like the, like the old globe, it's that it's for the elites, uh, yeah. which it is not. Uh, it's it, not. It, it, it is for the community and, and that it's too expensive, uh, to go see theater. I mean, Talk it's, about uh, it. it's, it's, it's a ticket start at, uh, what did they start? They start at, uh, $29 a seat. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you go to a luxury movie theater, you're, you're, you're spending that much money also. So these are just some perceptions, I think, mm -hmm. uh, that, that need to be er eroded or, or eliminated. Um, uh, to, to open, uh, to open uh, other communities up to the theater so that they can uh, uh, expand their, their cultural palette. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, th I think like it, there's this misconception that like black people don't go to the theater, mm -hmm. or, like, but that's not true. Like okay. if you look at like as, as however your feelings are about the man and like the work that he produces, if you look at what Tyler Perry did, like he brought black people to the theater. True, they came true. to see his... Like, they made the man a millionaire. Like, they came to see his shows. <laughs> right, right. They came to see his plays. It's a misconception to say that, like, black people don't go to the theater or brown people don't go to the theater. Like, or theater is, is just for the elites. It's just that a lot of times we cater to an elite audience. We want, like, we want the theater to do well, so, like, ticket prices are high to accommodate, like, everything that you see here and to pay everybody well and to make sure that everybody can like right. have a sustainable living but then that like cuts out a group of like working class people who want to get that release who want to come to the theater to like have an experience True. but can't afford it <laughs> like i can't like I, if, if, if i if i'm trying to like for instance my family personally i'm the oldest of five and for like my mom my dad and the five of us to go to theater, that's a grip of money that ain't nobody got, man. And so, right, right. It, like, access, like, reaching out to those communities and really, like, sort of digging up, like, like trying to find what they need and trying to find, like, ways to help them or ways to, to, to sort of be an ally in that community, I think can only 
benefit like a, a, a regional theater? Uh, yeah, it sounds like relationship building to me. Yes, sir. So the future for Marcel Spears. Uh -huh. I, I understand uh -huh. that you just got uh, picked up on a, on, a, on a new ABC pilot. Yeah, uh, yeah. City major pilot, the city major pro uh, project. The, the city mayor, the city, uh, it's, an, uh, it's untitled right now. It's, and I don't even know if I could talk too much about it because <laughs> it's, it's still super new. We haven't even started anything, but it's, uh, it's, it's an untitled project for ABC. Okay. It's a brainchild of Jeremy Bronson and David Diggs. And um, it's, it's my first big TV job. And here you are going on to, to work with the heavy hitters again. You're going from the Globe uh, to LA, uh, David Diggs, he, he's coming from Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Bronson, he, he wrote for Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. Uh, I think we can talk about the, the premise of the, uh, of, of the uh, pilot, because that's, that's out, that's yeah, out in the public. So, yeah. uh, uh, a struggling hip hop artist who runs for mayor to promote his mixtape and he wins. <laughs> so, I mean, this this is this is this sounds pretty funny. Yeah, it, I mean, the the script is the script is a lot of fun. Like the script is great. The everybody everybody attached to the project is just really really excited about it and just like a really again I've been lucky to be around like really great groups of people. Uh -huh. Like I've it, it's a blessing to like enjoy going to work and like I, I show up I'm like. I get paid to do this. Like I get paid to tell stories around these people. And so mm. that that's always fun. And I, I'm excited to like start and to see where it goes. So yeah. You're going far. You're on one heck of a trajectory. Man, I'm uh, trying. Nothing I'm not hustling, less brother. expected from a Colombian. You're 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 <laughs> you're, you're, you're awesome, brother. I, I think you're 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 making us proud and, and uh, you, just keep doing what you're doing. And again, thank you for, for coming by Theater Corner, thank spending a little me. time. You're a busy thank man right me. now. <laughs> and uh, all the best to you. And thank you, audience, for, for dropping in on Theater Corner. We'll see you next time.